Hello and welcome back to Face Off here on France 24 and a very happy new year to all of you. In France, the sprint has already begun. In three weeks' time, the socialists will square off in round one of the primary election to designate their candidate for the presidential election this spring. Seven candidates are on the starting line with no clear favorite emerging. But the winner, whoever that might be, will face a daunting task in the general election, with strong far-right and conservative candidates far better positioned to win. And also strong competition in their own camp with rivals both on the far left and in the center to take stock of the socialist primary and of the chances of the left to win in the presidential election. Philip Troll from Radio France Internationale and Stéphane de Vries, who is the Paris correspondent for the Dutch TV station RTL4. So one socialist, whoever that person will be, will need to win that primary, but it will also need to win against the far-left leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon and the former economy minister Emmanuel Macron and in the center. Both men are ahead of the socialists in the polls for now, but it should be added none of them would qualify for the runoff, with both seats now reserved for conservative leader François Fillon and the far-right boss Marine Le Pen. Let's begin uh, with a, a poll. Uh, it's not exactly a poll in terms of uh, where people will vote uh, soon, but in terms of the trust uh, they have in political leaders. And interestingly, Emmanuel Macron, uh, who is the former economy uh, minister who resigned several months ago, uh, is ahead with 41% ahead of the uh, far left leader, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who's also a former uh, member of the Socialist Party, who broke ranks several years ago, 26%. Then comes one of the socialist contenders, Benoit Hamon, 24%. Arnaud Montebourg, another uh, socialist uh, candidate, 24%. And Manuel Valls, who was until very recently the prime minister, with 23%. Uh, Philip Turl, this is only the trust uh, place, but it's interesting because it shows the race is totally open on the left. Well, let's put it in context, shall we, with the right-wing primaries which we had last year, which um, four million people voted in. And that resulted, as you said, in the uh, designation of François Fillon as the right-wing party candidate. The right wing was much more together, much more um, united in its uh, designation of candidates. The left, as you were saying, is a complete mess. Uh, we have the Socialist Party and then we have those independents who don't want to run in the Socialist Party primaries. So whoever wins this primary is going to find himself in fifth position as far as his ability, his chances of winning the presidential election are concerned. So even those who might even be tempted to go and vote in these primaries are going to vote for someone who has virtually no chance of winning the presidential election. So the question that is being asked now is, how many people are actually going to go and vote in these primaries? Are we going to have 500,000? Are we going to have a million people who will go and vote? The organiser of the, the, the primaries is saying that he would be happy if one and a half million people turned out to vote. But even that, the way things stand at the moment, with the Socialist Party in such disarray, with François Hollande not seeking a new mandate because he's so unpopular, uh, I think it's going to be very difficult for any of those candidates to shine and anyone to come forward, as even with a minute possibility of getting through to the second round of the presidential, let alone winning the presidential election. Yes, before I, I get uh, to Stefan, let's take a listen actually uh, to uh, the man who was supposed to benefit from the, uh, this primary but decided on December 1st not to run again, surprising, shocking, I should say, everyone. The President François Hollande, here is what he had to say in a message uh, to uh, his socialist uh, party in his New Year wishes. Let's take a listen to the President. Politicians have a huge role to play. They have to be up to the task, to show lucidity, avoid brutalizing society and also for some of our political forces, they have to avoid disunity which would lead to their elimination. So François Hollande warning against the risk of elimination if the voices are scattered, but this is actually likely uh, to happen because you have three main contenders on the left, and that's at least yeah, too, too many. Uh, when he decided last month to not to run for his own re-election, 
He actually hoped that Manuel Valls would benefit from the fact that he would step down. Uh, this has not been the case. So, uh, allegedly, François Hollande is now regretting somehow the fact that he's not going to run. Uh, but, but it's it, too late. It's, it's too late, yeah. The, the, uh, the deadline is closed for all the candidates for the uh, socialist primaries. But it, it really shows what, what kind of a terrible shape the Socialist Party is in right now. And as Philip mentioned, uh, the candidate, whomever that will be, will probably end fifth in, in, the, in the first round of the presidential election. And, and this was the leading party of this country. So the Socialist Party will be uh, severely uh, punished for what they have done the last five years. And it basically means that whomever will be uh, the candidate, um, in, the, in the, the winning candidate of the primaries will not, that's not really important basically anymore. It's basically the person who will turn off the lights of the Socialist Party. That's what this is about. Who will take the reign of the, of the current Socialist Party? But uh, is there a possibility uh, that the three main contenders on the left, we don't know who the Socialists will be, it's very hard to tell, Emmanuel Macron in the centre, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, might decide that, OK, uh, we have to unite, uh, even though we didn't agree to participate in a primary amongst ourselves, we have to unite to have a chance to make it to the round two of the presidential election. Is and this a possibility or is this totally out of the well, question? It's a possibility, but let's put it this way round. You have the, the Socialist Party that is, in, as Stefan was just saying, is in a position, a position of agony. So whoever wins that, uh, that primary um, this month uh, will come fifth, according to the polls in the election behind. Marine Le Pen behind, François Fillon behind, uh, Emmanuel Macron and behind uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon. So they, they've got virtually no chance of getting through to the second round of the presidential election. That's humiliating enough on its own. The second thing which is even more humiliating is imagine that, OK, they agree to reunite. Behind whom will they reunite? Are they going to reunite behind Emmanuel Macron? who was in François Hollande's government, but who isn't a member of the Socialist Party, who's never been elected to any office in this country. Will they reunite behind uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who is from the far left, who quit the Socialist Party uh, a few years ago, uh, who has done all he can to destroy the Socialist Party? And will the person who's elected by the Socialist Party to be their candidate have the humiliation to actually say, well, I'm not even going to run in the presidential election. I'm going to so go you don't see one it of the can other candidates. So it's very, very complicated. We'll, we'll take a, a listen to one of the Socialist uh, contenders, uh, former minister uh, Vincent Payon, who uh, said, yes, that he was uh, willing uh, to reach out to those who are not running in this primary, to Jean-Luc Mélenchon and to Emmanuel Macron. We need to be united. We can't exclude people. Is Jean-Luc Mélenchon a worthy man? Yes, he is. Is Macron a worthy man? Yes, he is. He stayed longer than me in the government. I am ready to work with everybody who agrees on ideas. So, Stefan, any chance of uh, this happening, or do you agree uh, with Philip? They will never be able to agree because they have egos, but also they have ideological differences. Jean-Luc Mélenchon and Emmanuel Macron, it's clearly not the same song. Absolutely. And, and the egos are important as well, because somebody has to step down. I mean, Macron behind Mélenchon or Mélenchon behind Macron, I don't see it happen. And, and they really represent a very different kind of voters. Uh, Macron could be able to to lure the voters of the right, the, the more moderate right, the center right, the, the, the traditional humanist right that existed in France uh, until, well, let's say until Chirac. Um, and he also appeals to young uh, left-wing voters who are not afraid of globalization, uh, who, who look at the world with, the, with you know, for a fr French well, person with, with some optimism, which is pretty rare. So uh, Macron is really able to, uh, he, he appeals to a large, uh, well, different, numbers of voters, different uh, categories, whereas Jean-Luc Mélenchon is really the left, the hard extreme right, uh, left, sorry, um, and, and they just don't mingle together. And, and also it's a generational problem. Macron is only 39 years old, which is really young in French politics. Mélenchon is already over 65. So, you know, it's, it's just a different generation, different ideas, and, and, and no, none of the, those two uh, will say, OK, I will run behind you and I will support you. What we're going to find in this, in this situation is we're going to find a battle between reason and ego. Yeah. And those who see reason will say, well, look, if we don't make a decision to back one of the candidates who is running on the so-called left, like Emmanuel Macron, who's centre-left, more towards the right, and uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who's on the far left, then we've got no chance of 
any chance at all of making it through to the second round of the presidential election, where only the top two candidates have the right to run. Uh, at the moment, as things stand, it looks like it's going to be François Fillon who will come into the second round and Marine Le Pen for the far right. So they've got to make the decision, are we going to back one of the candidates, Macron, Mélenchon, or will they back one of the, the Socialist Party candidate who's elected this month, maybe Benoit Hamon, if he's the one who seems to be running uh, high in the polls at the moment, uh, um, to, to run as a sole candidate for the left? That's going to be the big decision that they're going to have to make. It's going to be, it'll be it'll be in, in their interest to do that, but egotistically, I don't think they'd be able to do it. Right, very quickly, uh, Stefan. Is there a chance that the primary of the sources could be a surprise success, that many people turn out, that there's a clear winner, as there was one on the right, who might be able uh, to rise in the polls, have the other two uh, get less uh, support, and eventually emerge as this person who could be Yeah, I think it could be, uh, if, if there's a surprise, then it could be um, um, Montebourg, because he already participated in the uh, primaries uh, five years ago in 2011. He did pretty well. He got like 17 or 18%. Um, he has always been very consistent in what he said. Uh, he resigned from Hollande's government because he did not agree with, uh, did not agree with Hollande's policy. Um, and he is still seen by a lot of people, uh, extreme left people, as an alternative to Jean-Luc Mélenchon. So I think this could be the surprise. Um, Manuel Valls really thinks that he will be the new leader of the Socialist Party. I'm not so sure about that, but uh, yeah, I, I will put my money on, on, on Montebourg. And who are you betting I on? I think that... Manuel Valls may stand a better chance at the end of the day than Arnon Montbourg. The problem for Manuel Valls is that he's trying to become a new man when he's having to defend having been with François Hollande for five years, including three years as prime minister. So it's not very easy for him. Okay, we'll uh, continue to follow the socialist uh, primary in three weeks' time. Round one here on France 24.